Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Long Run live stream podcast brought to you by the 40 Runs Running Community and our sponsors, Sketches. Tonight, we're going to be previewing the Great North Run. Um, it's been a week like no other that we've lived through following the death of the Queen, and um, it's been one for reflection and sadness about that somebody who's been such a constant in our lives is not going to be around anymore. So um, we we wish everyone who's been affected by the death the best. Um, it means that yet again we're going to be in for another um, unique Great North Run experience this weekend. But um, it did look as if we weren't going to get one at all. So uh, we have to be thankful for that. And um, so we're looking forward to it, and we hope you are too. And um, if you want to know all about the Great North Run, then you've come to the right place. Um, because we're going to do a preview here for this fantastic event with Toby Frost, Hayden Harbord, Chris Ford, and Geordie Legend, Ian Wilson, if his tech holds up. He's got about 10 minutes, and if it's no good, we're going to chuck him <laughs> off. Hello, gents. How are we doing? Yeah, good. Oh. And um, good words there, Wilco. Um, front end. Yeah, I think we're with everybody on that, on the same page. And uh, yes, I was absolutely bricking it about whether this was going to go, uh, get cancelled or go yeah. ahead. Or I think we was all all uh, refreshing Instagram, Twitter and all that sort of stuff. And I think, in fairness, uh, straight out the front end, I think they've done a fantastic job in their communications. Um, great. I mean, I hammered them last week. Not as much as I hammered London Marathon events, who still are on my hit list. But... Uh, in fairness to Great Run, Great Run organisation, they did a fab job of getting that communication out. Well, uh, it's, a, it's it, they are uh, extraordinary circumstances, play. and you know, and they did their best. And yes, I've got to say, and I would say this if I wasn't a participant, I think they've come to the right decision because yeah, I, think, um, yeah. I think lots of events have been called off. And mm -hmm. um, the overriding factor about this is the amount of money that it raises for charity and these charities and the organization themselves who have been on hard times because they couldn't do, you know, we had a year off and uh, we had the last, last year's was, um, you know, a different experience. You know, they've had a hard time too. And yeah. um, I think we've come to the right solution. So obviously I'm delighted it is happening. Yeah. Um, we've got to give front a uh, shout out front end of the pod live stream. First, actually, uh, thanks to everybody for tuning uh, comments, questions. We're a bit late tonight. Um, because Toby didn't do his job properly. Um, but we're here finally, and he didn't play the right intro again, but we put a note against that. Hayden's making a note of all his mistakes. Um, but yeah, we want to hear from you as always. Uh, so stick them in the questions. If you're listening to this for the first time, you're thinking, what is going on here? We do, we we record this as a live stream, so it's a bit unique. We record this as a live stream. We have a topic that we start with and then you guys basically load us up with loads of stuff in the comments and then we tend to just drift off into something like that. So we yeah, want to hear be a login you. for If you're watching us on Facebook, there'll be a login. And if you could log in on that, then we can so see a pretty little face and then we can see your name helpful. and stuff so we know who we're talking about and who exactly. we're talking to. Exactly. So we, want to give a shout, we want to give a shout out to Sketches. Thanks very much to them for sponsoring the pod. Um, another shout out to National Running Show. Get your free tickets, people. Um, we're all going to be there, so come along. We're doing a live version of this. Get your free tickets. Come and meet your heroes. Already runs. And lastly, to our friends at Start Fitness, who are based in Newcastle, massive store in Newcastle. Uh, head office up there. So while you're up there, you want to do a bit of shopping, head over there. But if you go online, you can use the code 40 runs, get 10% off. We don't get paid a dime for that. That's just us giving back to you because we love you. Absolutely love, love you. Love you. And isn't it nice? To have Hayden, look, look at his little beautiful face. Look. Oh, I can't wait to run for the weekend. <laughs> well, we usually, we just see him, usually we just see him disappearing over the horizon, don't we? Yeah, usually. <laughs> oh, face behind me. Really? It's the age. <laughs> nah. he, he's another year older, isn't he? Oh, no, he's no tomorrow he's another year old. Tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh, yeah. well, oh, well, forget the Great North Run then. There's a much bigger event going on in Newcastle. <laughs> yeah. If you're wow. in Newcastle this weekend, there is... Um, there is a meet-up at the pub. Basically, it's, first, he's come along because you can meet Toby. Um, he, will have, he will have a queue there. But also, Hayden's buying the drink because it's his birthday. So, yeah. where, is, where are they meeting? Apparently, it's, it's, it's at the Hotspur, uh, 103 Percy Street, 4 o'clock meet-up. There we go. Now, Ian, so along. you're a local. What's his pub like? Is it rough? <laughs> no, it's all right. Not bad. Was there last year? <laughs> well, where are you? 
Yeah, it's just up the road from um, Haymarket Metro, so it's easy to find as well. Well, that'd that'd be all right, so there we go. Four o'clock, people. Four o'clock till whatever it is. We can just bat on all night, carry on and end, and just yeah, up to the start. That's what Will. That's what Wilco's going to do. Wilco, out of interest, um, what's on the menu um, on Saturday? Uh, I know the viewers will be interested after your performance. Oh, I don't know. Right? I'm just going to. I'll, 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 I'll surprise points. myself. You're going to surprise yourself. You're going. Thing. That's going to be my thing. Are you going Maccas in the morning? Double Maccas again? No, because I'm going from Stevenage and there isn't one. Oh, so well, 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 it is, up. but I'll be there to. No, I won't. No, no, you sure? No, I'll be there. But you know, I'll, you know, I won't go mad. It's only a half. You said isn't that it? Edinburgh. I mean, you basically yeah, get a Edinburgh out of food. Yeah, but then I was saying this. I was saying this um, on the forum um, this week when I did go to Edinburgh and I ate like a horse. Um, it was because it, there was method in the madness because I went to um, Yorkshire and I think I ran out of um, ran out of juice a bit when I did my first marathon, so I was determined to eat as much as I could. Is that why you had the extra couple of pints? Yeah, That's all about the fueling. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Ian. I mean, do you have a couple of pints the night before a big race? Possibly. Yes, <laughs> Hayden, Hayden are you on the sauce the night before a race? I. Uh, it, you know, it depends. Tomorrow's my birthday, so it's yeah, going to be it. inevitable. But it won't, it will say on the sauce, so I'll hydrate moderately. <laughs> hydrate. He's going to be hanging. He's yeah, we're be... getting the thing is, we're getting them, um, you know, autumn's upon us. We're getting into the Guinness season, so uh, that, <laughs> that's good for you. That's what it said on the adverts. So, uh, what can you do? Let's, what can you come to so, let us know. Email in at what is it, get drunk at a race.com. What is it, Wilco? <laughs> Longmanshire at gmail.com. And let us know if you get on the sauce. Um, if you've got no idea, if maybe you're in Peru and you're listening to this where we are, the biggest running podcast, um, it means having some alcohol the night before. So if you get on it, email in, let us know. We'd be very interested to know how how upside down you get before a race. Do you just like crack on and bat on, worry about it later? Let us know. Is Send Karen, the emails in. Is Karen Lumley going to be the first to get in touch? What yeah. 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 Karen, <laughs> Karen Lumley's already it's sent About one to 20. Legend. Yeah. Absolute legend. I mean, oh, we can talk dear. about Karen because um, we noticed yesterday she put up on when it was brilliant post. We all relieved because obviously, brilliant. you know, it was a tough day yesterday, and there was not only the um, sort of like the global situation, the whole, you know, the whole event and everything. But for us GNRs, you know, there was a lot of nerves about, and people were pretty edgy about whether it was going to happen or not. And then Karen put this post up about the things that you had to remember <laughs> when you did. The Great North Run. Great she yeah, Easy. absolutely. Some great tips in there. Some blinding tips. Number I think one, we could almost take them one by one as we go. Because I, I thought that, being as we're talking about the Great North Run and a preview, yeah. we should start the whole weekend at one end and then go all the way through. Well, I tell you what, Wilco, before we start, I think actually, because imagine if you're in Mongolia and you're riding on your horse, you've just corralled up the goats and you're getting into your hut and you're tuning <laughs> into the live stream, right? They might go, what, what are the boys going doing? on about this week? What on, what in earth is the Great North Run? So don't forget, we are massive in the US now. We are cruising up the charts in the US, right? So if you are based in yeah. the US or you're listening to this, keep spreading the word out there because we are doing no marketing. We refuse to do any. So we're relying you know, on you. You know, there's lots of British acts that never cracked America, yeah. but we are, so, we're out there. We're, we're, get, we're heading there, right? So because if we make it big, then what we can all do is we can get on a plane. Hayden's got a private jet. We can all fly to his place in Florida. We can stay there, play a bit of golf, and then we could do a live stream from from Hayden's uh, pace because it's massive. Um, so we could take over the US. So if you're in the US and you're listening to this, anyway, the point is, these people may not know what the Great North Run is, guys. So I'm just saying, I think, Ian, do you well, want to I tell think we should get Mr. Wilson to introduce yeah. it and tell us all about it. Go on, Ian. What is it? When did it start, firstly? Be 41 years ago now, I think. Because it was 40 last year, wasn't it? So, um, and it's just the best great North run in the world. So, How many runners every yeah. year? Um, it keeps creeping up. I think they've got about 60,000 this year. So 60,000. So. It's the biggest yeah. half marathon in the world, people, right? We're not making it up. The number they gave out today uh, in respect of it going ahead is that they reckon it's going to raise around 25 million for charities, which is incredible. You can't put a, a monetary amount on the awareness as well. So... Big, big news on that front. But, yeah, it's the biggest half marathon participation, I believe, 
in the world, but it's it's been going for yeah forty one years. It's a, it's a it's a crazy thing. It's in Newcastle, which is northeast. If you look at the map, it's up it's up in the northeast. Yeah, almost in Scotland. And it starts off. Where does it start, Ian? Newcastle. And where does it finish? All the way, all, all, all the way to South Shields on the coast, which is where I'm from. Yeah, I'll there we go. Ten so, mile so there's hopefully a little bit of education, but I would honestly recommend it, uh, Google it, and, and if, you, if you don't know what we're talking about, because it is one of mm. one of the big, big races. Uh, there's an elite field, uh, as always with this race. Uh, it's quite prolific in terms of the, the stats of some of the athletes they get at the um, this race. So over the last 41 years, they've had some real belters. I know there's an example, Sir Moe's won it multiple times. So it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a strong field usually on the elite stuff. So... Um, it is a big race. That's why we've decided on this massive platform that we have now globally um, that we're going to discuss uh, about this race. Because, no, it is, it's, a, it's a big one. It is, it is one of the biggest ones. I think it's, would you say, Chaps, is on par with London Marathon in terms of? It's bigger. Yeah. It, in terms of big... participation size, it's bigger. Participation, London yes. Mar London Marathon looking at 50,000. I believe this year mm -hmm. it was 57 last year, and they've increased it by another 3,000 to bring wow. it up to the 60,000. So the way that actually... I always look at it and the way that I say to people is that I think if you're a half marathon runner, it's it's the one that you you need to you have to do. You ought to have it on your CV that you've done the Great North Run, I always think. And the thing is that there's some good um good arrangements with a membership and things like that, because once you've done it once, you'll want to do it again and again. Yeah, I think for me when I when I went through Probably a lot, a lot of you guys went through, you know, cats to 5K, 10K. Blah, blah. The, the first race I ever really wanted to sign up for and, you know, put on was the Great North Run. It was the one that we used to have, you know, with the theme tune on the BBC, the, you know, and all that sort of emotion that comes from it. But you know, the history surrounding it, Brendan Foster. And I just remember, I mean, Hayden and everybody else on, on it today, it, you know, you just used to see it on a Sunday morning and, and I just remember seeing it and going, that looks amazing. And then when I got, you know, when I got into running more and more, it was, it was the first one I, before, actually, before the London Marathon. It was, mm. for me, uh, it was the one I really wanted to do. Obviously, yeah, because I never thought I'd be able to run a marathon. But the good thing yeah, is... Yeah, I think that's the point. I think that it's, it's, just, it's, it's something that... Yeah, exactly. It's attainable. People think that they can do it because yes. it's a half marathon and it looks such a brilliant, brilliant day out. And... It is. It doesn't lie. It is. It is, it is the it, best. It is the best. Everything race. you think about it, watching it. it on the telly, it's all true. Yeah, it is. I, I remember. Watching, I remember as Chris just said. I remember when I was younger, and we used to turn it on the BBC on on a Sunday. And I actually thought it was a cross country race when I was younger. I used to watch it and see everyone starting on the grass and at that finish. <laughs> but I just assumed. I thought to myself, "Oh, this is like the London Marathon equivalent, but like cross country." <laughs> I, I, I always knew it was big, but I didn't really know the ins and outs of it. And as you said. As you start to get more into running, you start to realise the enormity of it, and it is—it's absolutely right up there, spot on. Yeah, it's, 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 it, it, it's. I think we'll come up. We'll go into it a little bit later, and probably, but there's, there's something about it. I, we're, we're going to mute myself. I put it down, and I'm not just saying this, but I put it down to the people of the northeast. They're just—you yeah. can't until you've done it. But and then it, you you get the buzz when you arrive into Newcastle and the place. I know this year is going to be different, okay, right? So let's just put that to one side for now. We're in exceptional circumstances, but for me, the reason the thing is is, is almost addictive in terms of signing up for it mm. is is you arrive on Saturday and it's the buzz, but it's the friendliness and the warmth that those people in the northeast, you know, just surround you with. Mm. They are just the best people to be around and then you go out and you run and then they line the streets with bands and 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 you know just love and laughter and, and banter as you're running mm. through this iconic route it is really something special it it's, is it's a different it's vibe the to London, institution it's so much so that you turn up at your hotel and like You'll go to reception and the person behind there will say, oh, you're here for the run? And you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they'll go, oh, I've never done it. <laughs> and they are almost embarrassed that they haven't done if they haven't done it. It's like they're not a proper Geordie if they haven't done the Great North Run. It's like not owning a black and white striped football shirt. It's just like, oh, yeah, well, mm. I've never done it. You know, it's just like, 
you do the London landmarks, you don't get that at the Holiday Inn in Greenwich or wherever you're staying. No, you know, it's it. just it doesn't. It, it's so big, but it is such a part of. It seems such a part of North East. Like I'm sure, you know, you feel that more than it, anybody in. You know, for actually being from the area, the actual status that it brings. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I love it. I mean, I, I first started doing the run, um, because. We live in South Shields and the roads were all closed. I couldn't do anything else on race days. So I just started doing it. I think my first one was back in 1991, I think. Um, I think 92 is when I had my first. Still got my PB from there, so I still keep chasing that. Um, but it's just the, the support along the course. It's just second to none. Just up there with London for the support, without a doubt. I think, I think, I'll be honest with you, I think it's better. Now, before we carry on, chaps, I'm going to dive into some of these comments and questions. Yeah, keep them coming in, right? Because. You guys have been rocking it out early doors. I'm going to say we was a bit late on because of Toby. Uh, so, uh, travel from Guernsey today, Francis. Now in South Shields. Yeah, good. Uh, K okay, of the six. Where's hashtag? Where's Mel? Where is Mel? Uh, travel, junior races. Yeah, junior races cancelled. I mean, what can you say? It's, you know, it's just really unfortunate. They're always very good, the junior races. So, next year. You know, they'll be back. Uh, Wilco, how was the 60% effort the big half? Question mark. Yeah, yeah, it went well, mate. Yeah, I was pleased. I said at the Be start lovely. that I'd like to do between um, 205 and 210, and I did 2731. So it was bang <laughs> on. Fun. Yeah, so, so you know, shot right. I'm in the prediction yeah. business. So, uh, yeah, I was pretty pleased. Um, yeah, but um, got to eight miles and just sort of like thought, well, I'll try and do 10-minute miles in because obviously I'm going through tunnels and around Canary Wharf, my – GPS was completely out of the pictures. So I thought, well, I'll just nice. use this to see if I can push on at a decent, ma at my decent marathon pace once I've got a few miles in the bank. And yeah, I was pleased. It went well. Um, I've got actually it's a really good question just um, come out from someone actually. And it's made me think about uh, a little bit we need to talk about. And uh, it's a question for you, all right. So bear with me. Don't answer the question just yet. Uh, I know what Toby's going to say anyway. If you were going to do the Great North Run in fancy dress, what would you wear? Reason I ask is that Big Pink Dress Colin is doing his final one this year. So I think uh, we'll come on to the, we'll answer the question in a minute, but I think let's just take two minutes to give a shout out and a massive love, bit of love to Colin, Big Absolutely. Pink Dress Colin. If you don't know who we're talking about, Google it. Um, Colin is, uh, I don't mince me words here, he's, uh, he's an inspirational individual who's raised thousands for charity dressing up as he has done he's a, a beacon i think in the charity world for a lot of people not only is is he just a a genuinely nice guy but he's also um just just a selfless person who's done this to raise money year after year after year uh, and i will i'll never forget when i saw him in his dress doing London when it was the hottest one we've ever done. And he, and he just got it done. He was, I'm, I'll never, I'll never forget that. He's, I just want to send love out to him. And if you see Colin, please, this weekend, please, I know a lot, he gets a lot of love, but please give him some extra love because it's his last one. And I say that the guy is just an absolute legend. And I, and I love guy. One of the reasons again was for me to go up there was to, was to always spend time with Colin. Cause I always used to see him whether it down on the key or in the race. Like, was it two years ago in the video? I saw him. We went nuts because he was he was seeing he was seeing people over the line. We were it, we was going nuts to each other. He's just honestly, he, he is an incredible individual, and I say he's a beacon for any fundraiser out there on what you can and can't do. So uh, yeah, I just mm. I just want to give him. So to answer the question, Tobe, what would you dress up as? Uh, I would dress up as a chicken. Why? <laughs> that's the most random thing i was i wasn't expecting that i, so I never you, you knew what i'd say all right wilco oh well i couldn't have one of them suits and you know i what i oh something not too heavy something light i don't know not I've a panda a panda <laughs> yeah i was gonna say well that's why i'm coming to hayden last so ian <laughs> Hmm, it's a tough one. I mean, probably something orange because I do a lot of fundraising for them as research, so probably some orange. I mean, I did do the first lap of um, NGR 24 early on and giant inflatable sumo costume with bright orange, so probably something like that. Good shout. Good shout. Now, Hayden, we come on to last because Hayden's done. 
a fancy dress race uh, and raise loads of money for prostate. So well done you, mate. Um, so you kind of covered this off, but what was it like running in that, just to refresh people? Uh, to, to be fair, <laughs> it, it was last year, this time last year, I done, so I've done Great North Dresses the Panda and I've done London Dresses the Panda. Mm. Obviously, two two different experiences, two different races. Great North, I loved, absolutely loved it. And going back to Colin, it was quite funny, actually. So as we went up to the start, a lady come over from, it was BBC North East, I think it was, and she mm. come up and grabbed me and said, will you do an interview? So there was me and Colin, and someone else dressed up as something rude. But the three of us were there. <laughs> and we got we got interviewed by he's actually absolutely fantastic. And that's the first time I've actually spoken to Colin, had a good conversation. And as you said, everyone wanted a photo with him, but he has just you got so that. much time for everyone. He just stopped for everyone. And I actually mm-hmm. think you said you said about raising the money. Um, this might be a rough guess, but something in the back of my mind is telling me I saw something the other day that he's raised hundred and forty seven thousand pounds just in Great North. For, for various charities, it's just a machine. I, I can't, I get, I can't send more love out to the guy. I, I genuinely love that man. He is, but also people don't realise he's a, he's actually a good, no, no, but he's a good runner. You know, yeah. he, he, his background is he's a strong runner. Um, and you think how much that dress wears? So yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad that we got the chance on this pod this week, this live stream. And actually, you know what? When he's hung up his dress, it'd be great to get him on here. Mm-hmm. Um and talk about it, but yeah, he's um yeah he's just he's just an he's just an incredible human being, right? So uh, high lads heading out for quick. Uh, it is bigger than you're right, Mel. It's bigger than London, uh, as um as Hayden said. Uh, where was it? I saw a comment. Um, a gin or two. That's for you, Wilco. There was somebody <laughs> saying about big shout out. Was it who was it? Tobe for the Thames. Thames Walkers. Oh, I've oh, seen that. Who was it, Tobe? So, hello. Toby, are you there, Sam? Yeah. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm just trying to find it. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. Can oh. we have a shout out to all the runners and walkers taking part in the Thames Challenge Ultra this weekend with distances of 25k up to 100k? An important race which has survived for the capital with huge money being raised to charity. Putney's Henley on the Thames path. Good luck to everybody at the go. Great North. Cheers, Paul. Thanks, so, mate. good luck to that. So, um, Right, so let's uh, thanks. Keep the stuff coming in, guys. Um, about on, on the chat, we appreciate. It. Right, so should we say as you will, okay, as, you, as you say, should we go? Do you want to go through Karen's tips? Would that be? Yeah, let's go through Karen's tips. Right? Karen's tip first tip is go to the forty meetup. There you go. <laughs> there you go. go. Number one most important tip. Yeah, and that's this the is... one. That... Which one? Because it's two. Both. Yeah. Okay. Both. both. Go to the pub, and then go before the race. I would say yeah. that's the idea. Oh, yeah, oh, yes. get the park run. Yes, go. Free meetups. Yeah. Where's the park run, Ian? It's at Lisa's park run. It's um just behind um Newcastle's ground, so it's it's quite in the centre of the city. Um three oh, laps right. in the park. It's a good one. They have already put a post up and an event up there, so um get tagging in, get people in. There's already about twelve or thirteen people gonna come next, so hopefully more will turn up on the day as well. So that's Nine o'clock. As so you hopefully everybody will be in their pink or in their 40 stuff so people yeah. can recognise you. If you see any, the golden rule, the golden rule this week, if you see anybody in 40 run gear, go up to them and say hello. Yeah. yeah. Meet yes. people. Absolutely. Yeah. And because, you know, it's, it's, we've done this race before. Ian's done it on multiple occasions. I've done it a couple of times. Chris's done it multiple times. Hayden's done it just as a panda. We know what it's like and we, <laughs> But there are lots of people who will be doing this race. It's the biggest race that they've, ever, they've not done before, and they'll be on their own, and it'll be mm. nerve-wracking. They'll be It's mm. like everybody else seems to know what they're doing, and you don't know what you're doing. So come to the 40 meet-up. Come to the meet-up, right, because on the, we do a big one at Exhibition Park, okay? Now, this year they changed it a little bit with the, right, with the entries and sending the waves off in different directions, how to get into your wave, right? But we meet at Exhibition Park on the roundabout, with I can't remember the name. But look in the in the Facebook group. It's all on there. The details on there, and we usually have a massive picture. But what we also do, or try to do at that meetup, is to put people together in their waves. Yeah. So we shout out whose wave I don't know one two three whatever it is. So if you're on your own, we try we will do our best. If obviously if you don't say nothing, we can't help you. But we want to try and put you together with somebody if if possible. Okay, because 
the, the golden rule is that the reason we I started all this madness was I just don't understand why people are on their own on race day, okay? No reason for it. Unless, obviously, you want to be on your own, right? But in general, you know, problem shared is a problem. What, Wilco? Halved. There you go. So you can have a chat about it. You can go and hang out. You can do the warm up. You can sing. Hopefully, we can sing the national anthem and all that sort of stuff. And we can do it together collectively as a community. So please don't be on your own, especially if this is your first time and you're. It is an intimidating place when you're walking down to those uh, bag drops. Um, so just make sure you do come to the meet up, hang out, and, and we'll sing, be there. You, know, you can come and say hello yeah. to us. Say hello to everybody. And, and get involved. Don't be shy, and please don't be on your own because it's really, really important that that you get the best out of the day. And, and you know that's why we organise these meetups so people, you know, get the opportunity to not be on their own. So please do come along. That's an important. What what time is the meetup, guys? Because I that even need a, to know that. Uh, it's at nine, nine o'clock Exhibition Park, and that's on Claremont Street, I believe. Thank you. That's exactly it. Yeah. Well done, Hayden. Thanks for doing that. And yeah, and just follow the crowd. Yeah, just you, you won't be out, you won't miss us. It's on a roundabout, and then you'll see like the gates. And I say this year they've changed it a bit because I think they're sending one of the color waves one side and one the other. Whether it'll work, who knows? Who cares? Mm, yeah. But um, we will be on that corner and we'll probably be getting in everybody's way, which is our usual sort of thing. Um, because we be don't lots care. of people there. Um, oh, yeah, so some bloke had a go at me the other day about uh, and me sticking my GoPro in his face, apparently. So apologies, whoever that was. Apparently, yeah, he, re- he was really upset about it and started t- angrily typing all over the face on the uh, YouTube. So oh, I apologize. did he? Yeah. Where was he? he? I, got, I got in his way with my GoPro. So, what? Was it to the big half? Yeah, I mean, which is surprising. Did somebody at the big half have a worse day than you? No, no, but what's surprising, what's surprising is that the spent big half, I spent most of it on my own. Um, oh, so I, maybe I just uh, the guy just doesn't like me, which is fair enough, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but anyway, um, yeah, there you go. So, um, there, yeah, so look out for us, please come along to those meetups. There's no excuse. Um, if you're feeling a little bit shy, then go and find Toby because he's very reassuring in a in a in a not a weird way. Yeah, you can see how calming he is every uh, Friday <laughs> he is night. Calming. Honestly, us. Tom's the calmest person to be around. Ice you, cold. You imagine what I'm like in a situation with my energy and my nervousness, my leg tapping away. Tom just says, goes, yeah, we'll get him. Like, for He's example, the, the train tour. tomorrow. Perfect the train's tour. like at whatever, 10 o'clock. Tom's like, yeah, we'll leave about nine-ish, something like that. He don't care. He, uh, he couldn't give a monkeys. He's just oh, so like flatlining. What? It's easy. See what I mean? Oh, I'll get there. I might go yeah. and find a few different seats though when I get on it. No, oh, you've got to next to me. Oh, he's Tobe's so got, solid, isn't he? Tobe's That's got all weekend actually. with me. He's got all weekend. And then next weekend, he's got all weekend with me. It's going to be brilliant, isn't it? Look at his little face. Look. Right, Um. so what's next on Karen's list? Karen's tips two is wear an old top to dump at the start. Yeah, that's a good one. I've got... I've got, uh, funny enough, National Running Show, get your free tickets, 40 runs. I've got a National Running Show hoodie that I've got from the very first National Running Show they were giving us. Um, I've got that in my case. Yeah, a few quid. No, it's peanuts. Um, it's down now. That's going to come with me in the morning. Do them a bit of free advertising. You're welcome. Um, and then uh, I'm going to bin that. Somebody hopefully will get that who's more deserving yeah. than me. So, yeah, yeah 100%. So you know, when we say dump them, what happens is, uh, as in uh, many... You know, one of the best things I think about doing these races is um sorry, I just saw Tobes comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can't, we can't things, say what yeah, you just said that. in the comment table because um, it's rude. One of the um, one of the best things about doing these races is that um people um wear um wear an old jumper, not scruffy, holy, you know, just a, an old jumper that you finish with, or you go to a charity shop and buy one, wear it to the um wear it to the start. And then leave it at the start, and then one of the thousand brilliant volunteers will pick it up, and they'll take them off. I think they're going to the Heart Foundation this year, and they'll take them to um, they'll take them to the charity. You know, somebody will bung them in the wash, take them to the charity, and they'll donate them to charity. Massive. That's a great idea, and you know, it's much better than staying there in a bin liner. Yeah, Uh, Yeah. let's be honest. The people, the people of the North are fantastic. We love it. We love the race. But the one, if there is one downfall of the North. That's the weather. And it oh, you're cold. going to get strung up, boy. Oh, no, oh, so no, no. Bro, you ain't even there yet. I love the noise up, so everyone. It can be tough up there sometimes. And I think it's something taking a jacket, something that you don't mind getting rid of. Absolute great idea. Great tip. 
yeah. If you're um, if you're if you want to talk to Hayden about that, he's at the what pub? <laughs> I'm at the uh, Weatherspoons <laughs> down in Greenwich, opposite the Cape Town. <laughs> So actually, because we've just had a couple of people, so uh, the meetup, guys, quickly, because we had some stuff coming through the chat. What time's the meetup again on Sunday, just for those who missed it? Sunday morning, nine o'clock. Nine o'clock at right. Exhibition Park on the corner of, on the roundabout of what street was it, Hayden? Claremont Street. Claremont Street, thank Claremont, you. Claremont Road. Um, Claremont Road. What, what time, Chris Cummings is asking, what time are you staying at the meetup point until on race day? I think most of us, we have to get into our waves at about 9.30, 9.45 in it, something like that. Yeah, we'll be knocking about for a little while. Yeah, we're going to do a big The beauty of this is that we had problems. It was difficult at the um, it was difficult at the big half last week because everybody was going off at different times, but everybody goes off in one lump now. You were just different. When you're in a different wave, mm. you're just further back in the yeah, queue rather at the than back. going away for a different... A We've different had, yeah, because so, that, uh, funny enough, we could all be together. Place, Next question, Will Coach. Recommended arrival time is eight, but yeah. start time is ten forty-five. You've got to do the bag drop, which is where the buses and stuff. By the way, we need to do a whole episode about sustainability in the big half event, right? <laughs> Another moan that I didn't put in the video. Can I just get it in here? They use about eighteen buses, eighteen soil vans on each thing to do the bag drop. Remember, they're talking about sustainability. Eighteen little vans to run over there instead of like one. Or do you know what I mean? So sustainability, big half, London Marathon fence, you're a joke. Right, carry on. Uh, and uh, advice on what's the best time to arrive um, if you've got a 10.45. I think the best time to arrive, like you just said yourself, is when the meetup is at nine o'clock. Uh, Chris, you, you, should run with a, you should run the big half with a celebrity. I did. His name is Simon. Um, what are your race your race shoe favourites, uh, Hayden? Oh, if you know me, you know me. It's straightforward. Yeah. Alpha flies all day long. Now, Ian Wilson, this is a good question for you. What are your favourite race shoes? I'm just an old favourite of me, Pegasus. Oh, thank That's God, I say, Brooke. Um, <laughs> we know what Will goes in. He's in his pro too. Toby, actually, what yeah. are you going to run in? Because you've got your really dirty sock and endorphin pro twos, which should be binned. What are you actually going to run in? Because it's important to know. I'm, I might go pro three. He's going pro three. He's going pro three. Chris Ford, are you wearing those mental puma shoes you put on YouTube earlier? Yes, probably. I went out and did four and a half miles in them earlier, so I probably will wear those. Um, they say coming on. Right, I think we're back up to speed, boys. Right, next tip. Right, number three. Hayden's going to introduce this because I don't know what it's about. It says, because your name's tagged on this, use the embankment. What's all that about? <laughs> oh, I know what this is. It's, I quite, know. it's quite it's quite it's quite the fact that Ian's the first time I ever met Ian was actually last year. So I'd done this interview yeah. with um, Colin in the, the big dress, and then we went. By the time I got to the start line, I didn't know anyone. Everyone had gone off, or people were behind. It was a bit slower, and I got went down to the start, and like usual, mucked up with a gown of toilet. So I thought, where's the toilets? And I saw everyone <laughs> going up the bank, everyone going up the bank into the bushes. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to do this. But the caveat to this story was I was dressed up as the panda. <laughs> So this panda starts crawling up this hill into these bushes. Yeah, I did get some funny looks. Got completely stripped off, had a wee, got dressed back up, come down. As I was coming down the hill, all I could hear was, Hayden, Hayden, Hayden. There was Ian, I think Fletch was there, uh, Karen Lumley, Sue uh, Flynn. Mel and Sue, yeah. I went over there. I just, it felt so good to have seen them there. And straight away, you just felt comfortable already. I really felt out of sorts, like taking this costume off, going back down to the start, not seeing anyone. And these guys mm. suddenly they were just there, and I just thought that's exactly what I wanted, best. what I needed right at that moment in time. It's brilliant. Forty runs out his place. So there yes, the embank the embankment. Now we are not <laughs> saying in any shape no. or form, Wilco. You, this is for your lawyer, okay? This claim is claim right? Yeah, but I wasn't we are not. Yeah, we are not saying that Hayden's saying to do this, or Toby's saying to do this. Usually, I would stitch him right up, but. We have seen in the past the use of Mother Nature's toilet on the embankment of the Great North Run. There should be plenty of toilets provided by our friends at Great Run who do a fabulous job in organising this large-scale event. But if you do need a jimmy, head up into those bushes, okay? Just <laughs> And take a little pack of pocket tissues with you and then put them in the bin. So just as a bit of a pre-warning, right? There you go. But yeah, so don't be shocked, by the way, boys. Because I've walked in there and there's ladies in there as well. And you you just want the world to, like, just take you somewhere else. 
because you feel so embarrassed. So just be aware. You'll see stuff that you're not expecting to see if you do go into those bushes. Um, be there warned, you go. Okay? But we, again, we are not saying to do that if you're from the great run. Yeah, okay. Uh, Wilco, was sorry, all right no, then? Did we, did we yeah, I think that's okay. Man. We're not going to get sued by anybody for that. That's okay. Now, you can talk about point four because this is a big thing oh. for you. Oh. Stay left. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Oi, 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 oi. <laughs> right, okay. So I put a post up in the week on the Great North Run group and people, so bless them, who didn't have a clue what I was going on about. So Karen Lumley is my hero for this. So when you go out at the start, right, there's like about 18 lanes, if I remember rightly, and you'll sort of go out, look up the top because the BBC are on the bridge up the top, okay? So if you want to say hello to anybody, look up at the bridge. When you're in the pens, there's a big crane camera circling around as well. So make sure you get on that, point to your 40 runs top or your charity shop so you get awareness on the charity as well. But when you go out, you'll see a bridge above you. There's where the BBC have got the cameras on there. So make sure you say hello to your mum. When you go out of there a little ways along, you'll get the option. But you can either go over or you can go under, right? You want to go left because if you go left, you go through the sort of it's, underneath. It's under the, a flyover, isn't it? Yeah, that's it, Wilco. Yeah, it's underneath. You're not in a tunnel, so it's not like the doom and gloom and the absolute awfulness of the big half. You're going into an underpass. And what happens is some idiot like me will then start doing the oggies. And it is so loud, right? And it will get, honestly, it will put your hairs on your arm will go up. But you've got to do it. It's one of the best parts. And then you, you do the oggies and it basically come out and you're pretty much at the uh, time bridge. We're, Ian, that's about right, isn't it? Yeah. So you, yeah, yeah. you're absolutely buzzing, and already you're probably at what mile two or whatever it is. I don't even know what you are. There is it two the or three? Bridge is like just three, three. Yeah, three bridge. miles. You've already done five k, people, right? So this is your first half. Hundred percent go left, but just be aware that some idiot next to you, running like this close, will start shouting as loud as they can. Oggy, yeah. oggy, oggy. Right? Holding so, a GoPro. Yeah, yeah, upsetting everybody getting a GoPro. No, but just it is such a good thing to do. You'll never experience anything like it. I know some people do it at some of the races, but when you do it in, in the Great North Run, every single person who goes through those underneath those flyovers will get involved. It is amazing. It really is yeah. one of the best things about the race. It really is. And so every make sure kid will shout it out as you're going along the street as well. It's great. Brilliant. Yeah, just get left. But now people. we touch upon part point five. The biggest landmark on the course. Yes. Time Bridge. Yes, time Bridge. Every, yes. time I'm, every time I'm around my mum and dad's and they put Vera on, I drive them mad because the bridge comes out. I said, run across that bridge every <laughs> single time. It is such an... I mean, we did Tower Bridge last week and that's great. But this is... I think this is on a par because it's such an iconic well, thing. What, I don't know... Um... No, correct me, boys. And again, I, because of obviously events out of, our, out of what's going on around the world. But are the Red Arrows now not doing it, or are they planning to do it? Or I've not it's seen anything. Not seen anything. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I doubt they would have done it now based on what's happened. But years gone by when I've been there, we've, we've gone over that bridge when the Red Arrows have gone over. Which yeah. And that, that was our mission, was to get out of the start as quick as we could to get there for the Red Arrows. We like timed it to perfection. And it's again, it's one of those things like the Oggies. It doesn't leave you. It never leaves you when you go over the bridge and the Red Arrows are going over your head. It's an incredible, iconic part of it which is a shame it's no longer happening but still the bridge it doesn't it doesn't detract from the bridge how powerful it is to actually go over that it's, it's an it's an incredible moment karen yeah, it's, just, it's a great it, place to take a picture get a selfie of you on the bridge because it because it, it's not only is it sort of like such an iconic um component of the race but it is one of the places where um it has the biggest con uh biggest crowds lots of people are on the bridge so um, plenty of great atmosphere. It's a great place to take your picture and uh, give yourself a yeah, great view. It, it, it is a good one. It is a good one. Boys, just to reinforce the Oggy, 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 to show how yeah. big it actually is. And it's not just something that people do for a bit of fun. I think, if I remember right, it's actually on the medal this year. Yeah. So, that, yeah. Yeah, so there you go. So get involved, people. Go left. Now, boys, it's that time. We've got to pause. Everybody pause. <gasps> right, that's it. Sketches adverts just gone in. Thanks, lads. Brilliant. Yeah, love to have right, friends in sketches. Seamless. Seamless type. I, I, so I think it was seamless as well. You know, that's point five. And now we've got point six. We've gone along a bit round down the road. We've gone past Gateshead. We've got a bit of a head of steam. We're off 
And um, you can tell Cameron's done this. Mile <laughs> ten inch. Stay left and grab a beer off the low. Oh, no, yeah, it was obvious. It was obvious. Pints are coming. Yeah, that is one good thing about this race. If if you like getting on it, there is there is a lot of alcohol flowing <laughs> basically all the way to South Shields and afterwards. Right? It sort of starts on Saturday night, which is what we've alluded to. Um afternoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Basically, it starts on Saturday and the booze keeps going all the way to the finish and afterwards. It's that sort of event. And it's just, yeah, it's incredible. So grab yourself a beer at mile. Is it mile? Yeah, it's mile 10, isn't it? And yeah. what you'll find is that, every, you know, everybody, it, you're going along residential streets quite a lot. I mean, there's some big roads, but there's quite a lot of residential areas you go through to. And everybody comes out of the front door. And there are, you will be inundated with offers of ice pops, jelly babies, other sweets, fruit. You name it. Orange slices. Right, yeah. Orange slices. All yeah, sorts of stuff. Orange slices. All so there'll be some lovely Geordie who will take pity on you and offer you something out of their larder. Whatever mm. they've got, they'll be giving it to you. So uh, well, I'd love to hear next week, you know, who's got the most bizarre thing that they were offered by uh, a member of the general public as they were doing the great Yeah, Yeah, right? what's the email, Wilco? Longmanshow at gmail.com. So email in as your Great North Run experience and uh, we will, um, well, uh, when we say we, basically Wilco, because I, I can't be bothered. Um, <laughs> Wilco will have a look at it and um, yeah, there we go. We'll, we'll talk about that in a couple of weeks. So what's and next? Wilco? Seven, which is, well, that, so we're at 10 miles now. We're getting mm -hmm. to the business end. Well, we haven't mentioned, no. by the way, that it's, by the way, we've been going uphill a while. Cool, yeah. And I mean, not it to scare quite... anyone. Yeah, yeah, but it's one of those. Dragging. What's the name of the road, Ian? John, to John. Well, John Reed Road is um, where you go down the ten mile mark, which is where the beer is. So the bottom of John Reed Road, but on the left is where you get the beer, and then it's a slow climb up Prince Edward Road past the Nook before That's it drops down to the coast. It's just where it's you just... where you meet point seven, yes. Elvis. Yes! yes, it's the best bit oh, out of the whole race, people. <laughs> there was one video I did, and I had him on it. It's so good. <laughs> All you've got to think about, right, when you start this race, a couple of things, what we just said. Get left, right? No, BBC, get left, bridge, um, beer, Elvis. All you've got to think about in that, in that darkest moment, right, at mile seven or eight, and you're struggling, I've got to get to Elvis. He will be there singing. The guy is an absolute legend, right? It is without doubt the highlight, because you see Elvis, basically, people, and you're, you're home and hosed-ish, okay? There's still a little bit to do. But basically, just think about, I've got to get to Elvis. The guy is is my hero. You, he's, and he's usually... He's he's, sometimes he's in the middle of the of the route, right? Literally in the middle. Or sometimes he's on the left-hand side. Mm. I've been a couple of times uh, with him. But just think to yourself, I've got to get to Elvis. You'll hear him before you see him. It's a bit like Mel oh, House. yeah. It's great. It's a proper ammo. I just want to see, this is a great comment from Chris Cummins. This is a good story. Made the mistake in 2018 of grabbing some jelly beans and putting them in my pocket where they turned the glue and stuck my oh, shorts to my leg. Oh, oh, that is bad. I wonder if he then sat down on the Metro. Oh. Oh, who sat next to him? Oh. Oh, gross, gross, gross. Who's in the seat afterwards? Yeah. Um, oh. Guys, what's what's the next one? When do we get some more questions? Right, the next one. Now, this is one that I can completely empathise with. When you drop down onto the coast, don't sprint. It's a bloody long last leg. <laughs> Jesus, it is the long... I don't want to put anybody off. It's great. It's a brilliant atmosphere that people are spilling onto the road. It's like when you see them Tour de France cyclists coming up the mountain and everybody's cheering and in their face and all that. It's just like that. But don't think you get to the coast and it's done because you have no. got a mile to go down there. And with the best win in the world, it is the longest mile you will run in your life. Well, there's a couple of things to talk about there, Wilco, because I think, firstly, don't underestimate the hill, all right? Because you can stack it down it. It's it's a sharp... It is pretty um, sharp. Sharp. There's hail barns down at the bottom for a reason, okay? Yeah, I'm sure I'm I got caught out um, the first time you ran it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I was about. It is, it is a naughty hill. And if you're going a little bit too lively, you're going to get caught out. So just, whatever, you're not going to lose any time by just backing out a little bit, all right? Don't anybody go falling down there. But as you say, Wilco, you then hit South Shields, right? 
And it's like you're going into a stadium, right, and everybody's on your side. It is like the atmosphere just hits you. The noise hits you. It's like a wall, and everybody's cheering you on, but they're all on the same side. It is incredible. And you think, oh, I've done it. You ain't. You then got... (laughs) You think I've done it, and then you see the 12 mile sign. (laughs) And you think, oh, God, I'm done. I've seen Elvis. Wilco told me when I get to Elvis, I'm done. You ain't. (laughs) You've got to to do that last. Dig in is the thing here, right? The crowds will pick you up. If you're walking, and there's nothing wrong with walking, but if you are, be prepared that people will be saying you, come on, Fordy, get going. Come on, mate, get going. They will sort of carry you. Over the finish line. But, yeah, don't go down the bottom of the hill and then start sprinting because you've got a way to go because you'll be done. It is the longest no, one. Run, 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 you will Anything. never be more supported in your life. Yeah, it's honestly. unbelievable. God, yeah, keep it, going. In the the you noise. Know. You can't no. even. I, I remember we was, what, when you was it, we caught up Karen Lumley. Um, and, and we couldn't even hear each other talking to each other because it was that noisy. We was, like, shouting at each other. We we gave up talking because it's it was that that loud. Right, okay. Look, we've got some questions before we get on to the last last thing, right? Yeah, okay. Um okay, look, I'll quick shoe one. Stability runner, what's the best shoe for Sunday? Tempers or Pro 2? Go Pro 2. Um, uh, don't eat the Vaseline. Good point. Uh best way to get back for to Newcastle after the race. Yeah, they're all a nightmare, to be honest with you. Just Enjoy it. Go to the pub. Mm. Stay in the charity village. Do whatever you want. It's it's all. It's just a massive pain in the bum. Soak it up. Don't rush off. Uh, do you think faster runners near out near miss out on the uh, on the atmosphere? Uh, I don't know what you class as fast runner, but I so I've got no idea. Do the elites run out on it? I probably they don't really care. They just they're there for another reason. Uh, going back to Newcastle again. Same question. It's all a nightmare going back, guys. Just accept that it's going to take you plenty of time. Hang just, out in the beer tent. <laughs> yeah, just just enjoy the fact that you've just completed the Great North Run. Get your photos done. Get all your bits done. Go and talk to Gabby Logan on the BBC. She loves talking to people. She don't. She hates. If you ever if you ever met Gabby, she don't like anyone. Um, but yeah, just uh, hang out there. Don't rush and um, just chill out because it's going to take you a long time to get home. So. Take your time, get changed, whatever you need to do. Uh, get your bag and stuff like that. Um, and probably yeah, take the bus because I did the Metro and it was a nightmare. nightmare. Well, there's, the there's plenty of... Because you can... Because this right. They put, do you pay cash at the bus? Or can you just sort of know. like... Do you, you don't need a ticket to get the bus to you, Ian, do you know? What's happening this um, year? I think you probably still have to pay. I'm not, I'm not too sure. I'm normally hanging around in the pubs until about nine o'clock at night, so I don't know. Well, that's all right for you, mate, because you're down the road. You know, some of us have got to get back. He's hardcore. He's hardcore. <laughs> He's hardcore. There is, there's, that I say, there's no easy way out of it. you just got to accept that 60,000 people have got to get back to Newcastle. So it is what it is, people. And this so, is linked yeah. to point nine. There we go, see. You see what says, I did there, Yeah, I'll be fair. Yeah, and, yeah, but there's some sort of telepathic communication because you ain't Worrying, got a clue what's on here, have you? Yeah, go on but on. it is well, it's Karen, so you know what it is. Pack some Stella or Prosecco for the finish. <laughs> the queues in the pub and for the transport might be long. Yeah, yeah. stick a couple of cans in your bag. That's yeah, that, you that's yeah. Cool. yeah. <laughs> I, I would say in your bag, if you're putting one in, then make sure you've got something, you know, warm, whatever, just in case, because it, it can be breezy down there, but also some drinks. I remember one year, the after bag, was absolute pony. I mean, the the big half was bad, but this they didn't give you. I can't even remember. I think it was like a bottle of water and some soppy nut bar, which was useless. So I would um, I would make sure that you've put something in that in that bag that you're giving in. Just give yourself a like. I don't know whether it's a bottle of Coke, bottle of Lucas Ace Sport, whatever's your tickle, right? Uh, Tobe iced. Was it iced coffee? He drinks melt. Um, nice uh, uh, can you let us know? Can you email in Tobes and Melt at gmail.com if you like <laughs> iced coffee? Because it's what he keeps drinking after his runs, right? I mind you, I made Perfect. him a nice one the other day. What? Full of protein. It's, it's minging. Anyway, uh, but put yourself. Um, a couple of people chat. have. Sorry, just before that, a couple of people, m- me talking about buses and things like that, people are talking mm. about the travel wristband 
can give you unlimited travel. I don't know whether that applies on the actual. I think it's contactless. Everything's got to be contactless now since COVID. Yeah, yeah, thought, no, wouldn't you? But I've, I I've purchased one of those anyway, just in the off chance. What's that in? I think you had to buy the wristband before the 31st or something. Um, but I think you can get on the metro ticket machines, I think you can get a day pass on them as well. And that's contactless as well. So yeah, you might be able to get one for the whole weekend. So when you turn up, when you get to get off the train at Newcastle, you can um, buy one then. That might be a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, just. Just blag it. I reckon the bus will be contactless. It can't, it can't after COVID, surely. It must be. I'm going fishing to the top pub and in a cab. Yeah, there you go. Cab. Yeah, yeah but we ain't all got cab money, mate, you know? Oh, if there's four of you, literally, it's cheaper yeah, than I'll the bus. Yeah, I'll make you right. I'll make you right. It's the same cost, probably, by yeah. the time you've done it. I'll make you right on that, Hayley. If you four of you jump in a cab, it's probably about the same. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. never a bad, to be honest, it's never a bad idea to put a tenner in your bag. You know, or you, oh, no, you know, absolutely, you, yeah. Pack oh, or, yeah, there you, know, you go. Chris Cummings just confirmed buses are contactless and so are the metro ticket machines. So, you know, great. Just, Cheers, uh, Chris. Basis. See, we're adding value wherever we go. Again, the people in Mongolia haven't even got a clue what contact well, I mean, is. you know, this is, you know, this is all vital information. And this is how I got involved in the group before, because what I did was I was doing the Great North Run for the first time and I joined the Facebook group because I thought this would be great because I'll get, I've never been to Newcastle before. I'll find out about transport, places to eat meetups stuff like that and that was three years ago and i've never looked back and we'll cut honestly we're on the same wavelength tonight after this episode we are recording a london marathon special where we're going to be adding similar amounts of value in that which will come out next week because we ain't here because we're doing stuff um so we're going to be adding loads of value in that one so Make sure you tune in next week if you're doing the London Marathon. Or if you know someone who's doing the London Marathon, send them the link to the show or the video, and they will get that. Because there's going to be loads of stuff in that one, people. Like All a sorts mountain. of stuff about London. Yeah, it's going to be like a mountain. You ain't going to be, you're going to need a pen and a piece of paper. There's going to be so much information like there is. When does the ballot open for next year, Ian? I don't know. It's usually... Uh, oh, sorry, mate. Well, I'm talking about... Ballot for Great North Run. Um, yeah. it, the ballot normally opens in January and it's open for. Yeah, a it's month. usually just after Christmas, isn't it? There yeah. you go. So we well, I, I mean, we had nine points from Karen. I would add a tenth, oh, yeah. which would be after you've finished, if you get the opportunity, buy the membership. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. 100%. Because 100%. what happens is, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how much it is. Is it about 60 quid or something like that? Something like that. Yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah. And you will be, once you've completed. Um, once you complete the race, the nice folks at Great Run will send you an email, say, well done and all that. Would you like to buy a membership? You buy a membership for about £60 and it gives you the opportunity to bypass the ballot for the next three years. So my one that I'm doing this year, this is the second of my three. I'm hoping when I've done three years, they're going to say, would you like to buy another membership? Yeah, mm. they do. It depends on the point. And then I'll you are in we'll the blue. Be honest. Will can't be honest. I'm not sure they're going to offer you membership after you said that you've been weeing in their bushes. <laughs> Me, I didn't wee in the bushes. I'm I was sorry, Hayden, you're, you're off. Toilet. I was weeing in a proper toilet when the red arrows came over last year and it started <laughs> shaking. And I thought I was going to fall out the door. Jackass and the things exploded. Yeah, I thought I was going to fall out the door. <laughs> now that so would don't be a go sight, tarring me it? with this brush of illicit urinating up um, urinating in public the places. Like well, that what, panda. To be fair, where, where's a panda supposed to go to the toilet? Yeah, mate, you're right. It's in its panda natural habitat. There you go. It's in its natural habitat. That's what it's I would say to the couple. Yeah, just don't eat that bamboo, bamboo mate. <laughs> go and say hello to me. Yeah, so oh. I would say that. So look out when you're finished. Look out for your um, look out for your invitation mm. to have a membership. It's a cracking deal. It's a real bargain. Yeah. I would definitely recommend that. So no, it is. I look right. I know. Like, even, like, now, but even next year is probably going to be tougher for a lot of people as well, like, with the cost of living and all that sort of stuff. And we did a great episode on saving money, right? And, and what, I think, was it last week, Wilco, that was? Kind of yeah, remember. a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Right, check that one out. But, you know, cost cost of races and stuff. So, you know, it is it is an event that you can do, and it's it, it's it's quick outlay, but it is a little bit more, it can be cost effective in terms of, so you get mm. the chance to do, maybe one big race a year, you know, you're not having to yeah. go raise money. Like I mean, you, you will money. still, you know, buying this yeah. membership, you will still be required to um, pay up to enter. Pay up to enter because unfortunately I did see someone last week who said I bought the membership, but I've not had my race pack. 
That's because they didn't enter. Oh, they so you have to look out for this one. sort of thing. You know, you have to yeah, make yeah. sure that you're on top of it all. But it's such a great deal. I would thoroughly yeah. recommend that. It's one of the best. That is one of the best sixty quids I've spent since I've been running. Yeah, I'll, 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 that, um, when you see the the email come out, make sure you jump on it because there's only a certain amount of memberships and they will sell out. They always sell out. So that's a good if you point. want one, okay. don't wait. So if you get if you do get now, boys, um. We've had a question come in. It was a little while ago, but a uh, regular viewer. Uh, where is he? Can Man UK. And this is probably, we'll do this in before we wrap it up because we've got to film the other episode after this. Um, and I need more Lucas aid. So just put it on. Uh, Luke said, if you want to sponsor the pod, Luke, uh, email in at what sponsorship? What is Long it? Show at gmail.com. Yeah, I'll we're do the business taking, arrangements, mate. We're only taking six figures, Luke said. Um, but he said, what times are you all aiming to finish in? So let's go around the room. Uh, Mr. Ian Wilson, New Newcastle legend. What are you going for? I would like a sub two, but I don't think I've done enough training with all my ultra stuff and my red. So close. I mean, I've done, I've done 204 and something and half a few months back, but I've done all that stuff there. So if I see you, out around about I'm, I'm going to give you a kick out of the bum. I think you can do that. I what wave mean, are you in? What wave are you in, by uh, the way? Five, orange. Okay, so yeah, get, busy, enough, yeah. You get out there a bit lively, son. I'm looking for you, sub yeah. two. Uh, I'll chase you down into it. <laughs> are you going to be running at 60% or 59%, 61%? What are you going for? Somewhere between 59 and 61%, I should think. Yeah. Um, I'll be... Um, I, I'm so, This is week nine of training for the Dublin Marathon, so it's not an mm -hmm. A race, so I'm not going to be... Busting the gap too much. If I did a similar sort of time to last week, I'd be very happy. Two ten would be fine. Ten minute miles would be lovely. I'm going to go and enjoy the day. So um, okay. And what wave are you in? So all your fans. I am in way, I'm behind. I'm just behind Ian. I'm in the front white wave, number six. Six. Okay. So you can give him a bit of a G up. Um, yeah. If I right. put my foot down through the oggies and um, <laughs> the yeah. bridge, then I might get to him. Then I can get a bit of a kick yeah, up yeah. the rear end and That's get going. Run. All right. Um, <laughs> you guys discussed the Rebel V3 at all. Uh, it's not out yet for over here. So when we, when it's out, we'll discuss it. Thanks for the question. Um, Hayden, what are you going for? Oh, oh, mine's a little bit tricky. Yes. I, 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 to be honest, I want to run to feel. I want to run. I want to feel like I'm putting in a bit of effort, but I certainly aren't going to. And why is that for the viewers who don't know? I have got Berlin Marathon two weeks Sunday, mm. so I'm on a taper at the moment. So for me, ideally, and as most people know, on your taper, you want to be looking at your marathon target pace. So I'll be looking around about that, probably around 145, 150. Okay. And what wave are you in, so your fans can come up and uh, tell you oh. off a win in the bush? <laughs> I, I think I think it's a wave two. Does that sound right? I think I'm two, something like that. Like that. Well, originally, okay. I, originally I put down a faster time, but circumstances hasn't happened that way, so. That's one okay. a bit faster. Speed go. I got no idea of working on the day, really. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you what, boys, I tell you it was a funny story from the big half. Uh he was getting a lot of oi speed goat shouted at him at the big half. And then some guy lost it apparently when he saw him uh what was it afterwards or Saint Toby you told me? Oh, uh, is always... at the end that the, where the um the crossing is just before the finish line. He was crossing the road. I had, I had people asking me where Speedgoat was as I was jogging around. Just random people came, where's Speedgoat? Like that. It was quite <laughs> amusing. So um, if you want to see Speedgoat, he's going to be out on course, although he has got absolutely no idea in which wave he's in. So, And what time are you going to do? And what time are you after? Uh, we're running uh, goal pace. We're running to 8.35 per mile, uh, banging in line with our marathon training plans because I've got – uh what three weeks i'm out three weeks out to london so i'm putting in a gold paced effort uh and the boys are going to do the similar sort of things guys you they got amsterdam a couple of weeks after that so we're just going to cruise down at gold pipe cruise it's not a cruise by the way the great north run is uphill um so we're going to try and put in a bit of an effort so you know that will sting at the end by the time we get to the top uh going into south shields that'll be stinging but you know, you need to do these workouts. It's good. So, yeah, so we're, that's what and we're doing. I, I think we've concluded that all five of us, the priority is going to be to have a great time. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the only reason I do this event is, is, is I'll be straight up. I, I couldn't really give two oots about uh, the actual running part of it. For me, 
The Great North Run was always a weekend away. My brother to do a race, um, to meet meet some of the 40 runs guys who we don't see as regular because obviously, you know, being Southeast based, it's lovely to come up and get out of that environment and see other runners from other parts of the country where they're coming in from Scotland, Ireland, wherever they've come in from, even some of the guys from the US. We've got some amazing people out in the US um, and other bar flung places that support 40 runs. Um, so to connect with them at a big race is, is great. So I, I absolutely love coming up really just just to see people and hang out with people, come along to the meet up in the morning. I really do like that. Um, and then just seeing everybody out on course, really. that That's that's the Great North Run for me. The, the running part of it is what it is. Um, and that, and that's, you know, that and that and that's the only reason I do it is just to say, see, see everybody and, and feel part of, of, a, of a community that's, you know, doing it for for the right reasons, you know, just having a laugh and enjoying ourselves in, in what will be a sombre environment. I think it's, you know, a good way to end. Yeah, well, gonna... we, I, I think what I think about, um, you know, w- without going on about it too much, I think that organically we'll get the right environment. It will, yes. it will sort itself out. Yes. Absolutely. And people will, you know, people, people shouldn't be worried about feeling um, inhibited because what's happened this week, people shouldn't worry too much about, Oh God, do people think I don't care because I'm seeing that I'm having a great time yeah. and I'm not bothered about this sort of thing. Do whatever you're comfortable with. That's mm. the key for this right. And I think that we will find that happy medium when we yeah. um when we're out there and it will look after itself. I think yeah. it's gonna be a great weekend. It's always yeah. a great weekend. We will look forward to seeing you in the hotspur pub from about four o'clock tomorrow, half past four. And for Hayden's, um, birthday, for for Hayden's birthday, first yeah, round it's Hayden's of birthday. Just say, yeah, if the guys on the door say, sorry, mate, can't come in, you say, but it's Hayden's birthday, and then they'll let you in. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Hayden's birthday tomorrow. Tomorrow? It is tomorrow, September 10th. 25. I can't believe it either. I don't and know. then we've got, <laughs> and then there's the meeting on Sunday, but you can meet us all before. And, um, we will have a great time. Thanks very much, Ian, for imparting your wisdom on this Thank brilliant you, event. I'm looking forward yeah, to seeing you tomorrow for a, and certainly on Sunday for a beer or two. And um, so please remember, we are here at seven o'clock every Friday um, on YouTube or Facebook. And if you can't make it live, then you can download us on your podcast provider of choice, whether that be Spotify, Amazon, Apple or those sort of people, we are down there and you can take us on your long run. Good luck wherever you do. If you're not coming to Newcastle, have a great time and get your runs done this weekend. And I hope you have a, you know, you enjoy yourself, whether you've managed to get your event on. Join the park run on Saturday morning. Details on the uh, on the Facebook group. I'm looking forward to seeing you all at Newcastle. So um, we shall see you then. And if we don't see you then, we'll see you next week. Thanks very much. Toe, titles, please.